Greetings, pen pals. We have here a variant on a variant. This is a Wingsong 601A. It's a variant on an earlier version of the 601A that came out, which is in itself a variant on the 601, which came out a couple of years ago, which is in itself a uh, sort of homage slash knockoff of a Parker Vacuumatic. So let's go through that little bit of history. So uh, a few years ago, it came out with this pen, which is a Wingsong 601. This is a uh, diaphragm. Uh, based uh, hooded nib uh, with a does have an ink window uh, Parker vacuumatic style pen so it has a rubber diaphragm inside that causes the vacuum air pressure uh, to air, air to push out um, ink gets sucked up and you pump it a bunch of times and it fills up but it does have a rubber diaphragm um, we have a demonstrator version of that exact pen so here's a demonstrator version so you can see hooded nib, etc. You unscrew the back, you have this pump, and you can see that rubber diaphragm moving in and out, which sort of expels the air. Shortly after that, they came out with a uh, an important improvement slash variant of that pen, which used a spring-loaded piston. I have that one here. This is a Wingsung 601, but it has a different mechanism. It has a piston and a spring that does effectively does the same thing. I'm not going to push on it because it's um, this one has ink in it, but uh, I also did a review. I did a review of this pen uh, a couple of years ago, and I certainly did a review of this pen when it first came out. So these pens have all been reviewed. They then came out with a 601A which also uses the spring-loaded mechanism, but had a bunch of different nib options. It had an option to have this sort of tubular uh, style uh, nib, and um, it also had um, an option to have a conventional style um, nib, which let me find it here, which is the pen we're gonna be talking about uh, today. So this is sort of conventional style nib with the spring-loaded piston type vacuumatic uh, filling mechanism as you can see right here one thing they also came out with around the same time they came out with the 601a was this useful little tool for disassembling the pen so um the way what they did is an improvement on the vacuumatic for the vacuumatic you absolutely had to have a special tool from parker to unscrew the back what Wing Sung did is they made that sort of a plastic nut. So you could use theoretically any type of a wrench, provided it was a soft wrench and not gonna uh, destroy the plastic to unscrew that. To make it even easier and one step further, they came out with this little tool, which is just effectively has uh, sides that match that nut there. So you just simply slip that on and you can then turn it and then unscrew the filling mechanism uh, from the back of the pen, like so, and we'll do that right here for you folks, and there you go, and that's the removal of the filling mechanism um, very, very, very easily uh, from the back of the from the back of the pen. So that works super well um, and makes maintenance of these pens really easy. And they came out with this little tool uh, right around the time they came out with the 601A about a year or two ago, and um, for a while, at least, they were including this tool in the 601As when you when you got them. You could also still buy them um, uh, a la carte on, on eBay and a few other places uh, like that. Um, and again, like I said, they came out with a lot of variants on the 601A, so I reviewed this one uh, a while back. This is this really pretty uh, machined metal cap. Um, they also have one that's very, very conventional and sort of office-like, if you will. Again, this is with the uh, tubular uh, nib, um, but uh, sort of very conservative looking black version. Different jewels. Uh, some have jewels on both ends, like this one. Some have single jewel, like this one. They also came out with what I really like is these flighter versions, uh, both in the all chrome and the chrome with the gold trim. Really, really nice. Um, I really like these quite a bit. Um, and um, they also came out with this uh, demonstrator version, which is what we're going to be showing you folks today um, because um, uh, it's a demonstrator, so it'd be nice to show you filling it up. So this is a, uh, a single jewel version, and the only actual jewel it has is on the end 
of the uh, blind cap, which you unscrew to reveal the filling mechanism. And it has sort of this um, cone-shaped metal finial on the end. It has brushed uh, steel clip, uh, cap, I'm sorry. And it says, uh, six, has some Chinese characters, says 601A, uh, made in China along the uh, base of the, of the, uh, of the cap. Uh, it's a pull to uncap and it reveals this conventional nib with the Wing Sung logo it says Wing S has some scroll work and an F for fine. And what's nice is it's got a transparent feed. Um, um, you can unscrew the section um, on, on this pen uh, to reveal um, the um, breather tube. You have to be careful you don't break the breather tube when you, when you unscrew the, uh, the section there. So that is uh, this, uh, this pen. Uh, effectively, you unscrew this, you pump this a few times in the ink, and that will, and that will uh, fill. In terms of size, these 601As are all obviously the same size with each other, and they're very conventionally sized pens. Here they are compared to a Lamy Safari and a Parker Metropolitan. Um, and you can see they're pretty much right in line size-wise with these guys. In terms of weight, 20 grams for this demonstrator version. So it's pretty, pretty okay weight pen, not an ultra light. So it's got a little bit of a, of a of feel in the hand. And obviously um, this pen is actually pretty decently long enough to use unposted. I do post and it posts very, very well. I don't particularly feel it's back weighted. A lot of the weight of the pen is in the cap because all the metal is in the cap. Um, but um, uh, uh, I, don't, I, I like to post it, so I don't feel it has being back weighted at all. In terms of clip, we're talking about obviously a very, very derivative Parker Arrow style clip. This is a flat out copy of the Parker Arrow clip. If you like the Parker Arrow clip, um, you'll like this. If you are okay with a non-Parker pen using the, the Parker Arrow clip, you will like this as well. If you're not okay with a non-Parker pen using the Parker clip, then you may have a may have an issue with this. So um, that is pretty much the parts of this pen. And again, it's fairly straightforward. There's, like I said, there's lots and lots of variants of the 601 and 601A. And this, what I have here, just doesn't even begin to scratch the surface. So there's lots and lots of different variants of this. It's a really, really nice pen. Um, you have a lot of nib options now, um, at least uh, three that I know of. You have the, you have the, um, you have the conventional uh, nib that we're gonna show you today. You have the sort of rounded tubular style nib, and you have the uh, hooded nib that was on the original 601. So there's lots of choices of nib styles. Um, etc. So there's something sort of for everybody uh, available here. So I guess the next step would be to ink this pen up and um, see how it writes. Okay, it's going to be a bit of an adventure inking this pen. So I have a brand new ink in the, maybe the coolest bottle of any ink ever made. This ink is Krishna Pakaza. This is ink from India. Um, and uh, Krishna has a lot of different inks. This is my first Krishna ink that I've ever bought. And um, the main reason I bought this particular one is because it comes in such a cool bottle. So the bottle is in a can. Uh, it's very well packed and you're gonna see why because this is, bottle is quite the delicate thing, at least from what I could tell. So it's in this can, the lid just simply, um, the lid just simply uh, lifts off uh, to reveal the bottle nicely nestled in the, um, foam here. If we carefully pull this out and everything we do with this ink bottle is going to have to be done with care because as you can see there's a lot of delicate features of this. So what we're dealing with here is something not totally unlike the Ackerman bottle where you have the well that the pen fills from separate from the main bo body of the ink. So what the theory is is you tilt this, the ink runs in and fills up this ink well and then you fill your pen from this well. This just looks great sitting on a desk. The only problem is uh, you have to have a kind of desk that's really not going to get jostled very much or you're not going to accidentally knock this over because uh, this is really quite um, 
it's really a quite a nice bottle. Now, the story with this bottle goes is there was some copyright issues. You can read about it online. There's some, with some After they announced this, it turns out some other firm had a trademark on this bottle style or something, and so they had to do some negotiations um, to allow them to use this shape and style bottle. Um, uh, so that apparently took a while to get resolved. So the release of this ink was, it was a bit delayed. I only recently received this. So it's a really cool bottle. It says Krishna on here. It's got this stem cap. It's a 30 milliliter bottle. So not, we're not talking about a crazy amount of ink here. Um, and, um, let's, uh, ink this up and see how it, and see how it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, functions. So I'm going to open it up. I will tell you when I first got this, I couldn't, I was, the cap basically was very tight. I couldn't open it. I was afraid to like apply force to it. You obviously don't want to hold it from here while you're turning here because you're applying stress there. So you have to kind of hold it from this part and turn it. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't do that with confidence that I wasn't going to break it. So I did have to run it under some warm water just to loosen the cap a little bit uh, in order to, to, to uh, be able to, uh, to open it. It does have this inner seal here, which we will, uh, I will remove. And that that comes out pretty pretty easily, um, and we're going to ink up our pen. So this is the um, Wingsong 601A um, in the um, in the pump style vac uh, vac uh, vacuumatic style filling pen. So what we're going to do is we're going to immerse it. We're going to pump it up a couple of times. The ink will come up through that breather tube as we do that and let's see what we got so we're going to pump this guy and as you can see the ink is starting to come through that breather tube and this is working quite well it's going to take a few pumps probably five six seven eight ten pumps to get it filled um, and once it gets past the level of the breather tube That'll pretty much be a full fill from this perspective. And I think we're just about there. Yeah. So that's uh, pretty much what we would consider a full fill on this pen. But that filled quite nicely and quite reliably. And I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. You could see our transparent feed taking on the nice deep blue color of, uh, of this ink. I can see uh, from around the rim of the bottle that this ink does have some nice sheen to it, at least on the glass. So we'll see how it looks on paper. Uh, so we're just gonna replace this blind cap at the end. We're gonna cap the pen. We're going to cap our ink. Replace this inner seal, replace the cap. And I'm gonna tighten it, but not too much um, and um, we will be back and see how this pen writes okay folks what we're writing with here today is a wing song model six oh one a and this is a uh, fine steel nib and uh, I'm very very happy with this nib so this is smooth it has a very very nice flow very 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 nice I'd say wetness is uh, slightly above average but pr pretty pretty nice I'm very pleased with uh, with the way this writes very nice. Not unlike lots of other Wingsung uh, nibs that uh, that I have. Probably we're not talking about much, obviously, in the way of flex. So no, you're not going to get flex out of this nib. Um, reverse writing. Not bad. Not bad at all. I would say that takes it down to an extra fine. Um, Pretty nice, actually. 
Um, so I'm really liking the way that this writes. I like the transparent uh, feed. Now this ink is extremely saturated. So it, the feed looks almost black, the transparent feed. But if you had a much lighter ink, I'm presumably it would look, you'd actually, you know, see the actual color of the ink a, a lot better. But this is a very, very saturated, um, uh, deep um, sort of aqua blue. Um, so it's, um, it's going to, uh, to, uh, to behave that way. Um, but I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. Speaking of liking, it would be really, really great if all of you out there could please like, comment, share, and subscribe. That would all be most welcome. Um, so that's this Wingsung uh, 601A variant. Like I said, you have a lot of options here in this 601 uh, family. This is a really nice demonstrator. These flighter versions are really nice as well, I have to say. I'm a really big fan of these all steel uh, flighter versions. Really, really nice. Um, so that's about all I have to say about this particular pen. Really, really nice pen. Works really well. Um, but uh, let's talk about this ink now for a bit. Okay, this ink, as we said, is Krishna. Pakiza. That's P-A-A-K-E-Z-A-H, Pakiza. So um, here's the, uh, what the, what the um, swatch on this ink uh, looks like, and as you can see, um, what we're talking about is a deep, deep sort of aqua blue with um, uh, some sheen to it. Um, really, really nice. Um, and this kind of somewhat wet nib looks uh, looks pretty, pretty nice. But this is a nice ink. I'm liking this ink quite a bit, and certainly that bottle was was quite, quite the interesting thing. Um, uh, really, really a showpiece bottle, but be careful where you show it. Maybe like a uh, a china cabinet or something like that with a with a closed door. I, if you, to me, if you just leave that sitting out on your desk, you just it's, it, what, that, that bottle just looks so delicate. You kind of things like you're gonna you look at it the wrong way, it's gonna break. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it's me just being overly uh, overly uh, cautious. But uh, this uh, Krishna Pak is a very very nice ink. I'm liking it uh, quite a bit. It is a very, very saturated ink though. So you're not getting really shading too much here, maybe a little bit, but um, you are getting a, a, a bit of sheen, uh, etc. So, um, but uh, again, very, very nice ink. I'm going to definitely try more inks out from Krishna. This is my first one, but it'll definitely will not be my last. They do not all come in this cool bottle. Uh, as a matter of fact, I believe this one at the moment is the only one that comes at, that comes at, that, that's available in this particular uh, uh, interesting bottle, but maybe there'll be others or maybe they'll have other different design bottles. Who knows? Um, but anyway, Krishna Pakiza, very, very, very nice uh, ink. Um, that's what it looks like on this um, uh, Rhodia paper. Let's take a look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper. Okay, like I said, we're writing here with um, Krishna. Pakaza. And that's, this is on Tomoe River paper. And definitely you see a bit of shading on the Tomoe River that you don't see on the Rodeo, which is very, uh, very, very nice. Um, but this is just a, a really pretty ink and I'm, uh, I'm definitely liking it quite a bit. It's, it does have sheen. We're not talking about like KWZ, sheen machine level type sheen or even say a Skull and Roses level sheen. It's a nice moderate amount of sheen, which is really, really kind of nice because some of those are uh, ultra sheen inks are really a bit over the top when it comes to, uh, when it comes to sheen. So 
you don't have that uh, you don't have that situation uh, here um, but as you can see as we lift it up a bit um, we get the different light hitting it you could definitely see the sheen picking up on the ink which is uh, really really nice but again not crazy like uh, where the sheen just completely washes out the underlying color or anything like that so I think this is a really kind of sweet spot in terms of level of sheen that you get so um, again pretty pretty nice I'm really liking the ink between the bottle and the fact that what's in it is actually a pretty nice ink this is one of my favorite pickups this year I'd say in terms of uh, of uh, of inks I'm really really liking this ink uh, this ink uh, quite a bit um, in any rate, I think that'll just about do it for this video. I sure hope you enjoyed watching it because I certainly enjoyed making it. Um, and as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.